Hello, I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager, and welcome to the In Conversation With series, a series where I speak to notable figures in the realm of financial services. Listen as they share their personal journeys, thoughts on the industry, and advice for aspiring advisors. And in today's episode, I'm joined by Lewis Byford. So, Lewis, if you could um, give us a more in-depth uh, introduction of yourself, that would be great. Awesome. Appreciate you. Appreciate you having me today. Yeah. There, Kim. That's fantastic. So, yeah, as you said, yes, I'm Lewis Byford. Um, I'm the co-founder of Anthony George, uh, Anthony George Recruitment, which is a um, financial planning specialist recruiter basically, mm. uh, covering um, the whole of the UK. So, um, yeah, a little bit wow. of intro of me. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I'm assuming that you started your career in recruitment. Is that right? No, I no? didn't, funnily enough. No, <laughs> I kind of fell into recruitment. But I suppose like my most um, recruiters, I suppose, um, and also a lot of financial advisors, you know, when we speak to yeah. a lot of advisors, you go, so how did you how did you get into advice? And they go, well, I kind of fell into it, really. And I'm yeah, a similar I've story heard to so myself. many different from being in the army cricket uh, football player. I'm looking for someone who's going to be like I used to be a wrestler or something and I decided to become a financial advisor but the, no story is the same and I kind of love that absolutely no absolutely I mean really how we kind of fell into it really there was originally three three owners of the business and before mm-hmm. that I had a business that basically supported financial advisors in kind of lead generation um, in that sort of area, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we kind of decided, you know, to go down the recruitment side back in 2016. And we thought, right, we want to we want to set up a new business. What does that look like? And we thought, well, we know financial advisors. We know what their needs are. You know, we must be able to kind of recruit for them. So literally off of a whim, with no real business plan, back in 2016, we literally went, we literally just went in for it, you know, and it has been a journey, you know, yeah. it really, really has. It hasn't been easy, mm-hmm. um, but you learn so much on the ground. Like most kind of entrepreneurs might want to say, or if you're going self-employed as an advisor, for example, you know, you're taking that leap of faith and it's always been a little bit of a risk. But I think if you've got the right mindset and you kind of know what you're doing, you'll you'll make it work. And mm-hmm. you know, we're six, seven years on now. Um, you know, we're a team of seven, you know, we're super specialized in what we do. And mm-hmm. we're we're coming from a real different angle now where we, you know, it's it's really, really exciting. It really is exciting. So so yeah, a little it bit sounds, different. Yeah, it sounds really exciting. I mean, I clearly in 2016, you must have seen that gap in the market, you know, that everyone keeps shouting about, oh, we need more advisors. You know, what what, yeah. what was it that made you kind of notice that that was something that needed to be addressed? Yeah, good point. I think originally we had, like I said, briefly meant it was three people in the business mm-hmm. and one of them was an advisor. Mm-hmm. And really just speaking to advisors and understanding what their problems were, what was going on and, you know, the changes since RDR originally, you know, when mm-hmm. there was a lot more advisors and, and then so many advisors obviously then left the industry or didn't want to, um, didn't want to re-qualify. We suddenly realised that there was a, there was a real lack lack of advisors at that point you know mm-hmm. when so many people did leave the industry yeah um, and then as you start to speak to different employers you start to hear and understand what their struggles are you know whether that's finding clients or you know they i'm i'm too busy i need somebody else to support me you know i've got more mm-hmm. clients than i can i can deal with i'm going to sell them on and then you've got the conversation about different acquisitions that go on left right and center but yeah we kind of realized that really from from rdr if you like when you know i can't remember the, the stats now but there was something like thousands and thousands of people that left the industry leaving mm-hmm. it so small and i think i can't remember what the latest figures are but i think it's something like 20 it's something like 24 25,000 advisors in the UK now when yeah. previously it was something like 200 or something mm-hmm. it was it was significant difference I think in, in you know in the change mm-hmm. yeah that sounds like obviously you cornered the market at the right time which is great I mean not having a business plan probably not that great but at the same time I think it's all about learning when you set something completely new up absolutely I literally remember 
one of the first two years. So I sat down with my mum and uh-huh. we, we sold my we like sold a proportion of the original business. Mm-hmm. It's kind of right, do I do I buy somewhere and grow up and get a job? You know, okay. thought, do I do I do that? Or do I risk it all and say, you know, just put it all into something? And obviously I took the latter. Mm-hmm. And I think about three years in, I was thinking, what did I do? You know, <laughs> I think what what was I even thinking? But you know, we're past that now. We've mm-hmm. learned, we've learned a lot. And now we're really building off a totally different foundation. You know, we're very proud to say we are the UK's first and only subscription-based recruitment agency. We fix the costs, it's unheard of, particularly in financial planning. Mm-hmm. Um And we we add so much other than recruitment to that, you know, because I think coming from a non-recruitment background, Mm -hmm. I think it's been really helpful for the industry because we're looking at it from a totally different angle. You know, I I didn't understand really how how recruitment got such a bad, bad reputation when we have access to so many good candidates that in a way are generally not happy in where they are, you know, or they don't feel they're valued in their job. And it's about giving them the confidence to to look at other opportunities and and be happier. You know, that's a passion of me. We do generally change people's lives. But also on the flip side, helping firms grow when notoriously it's been really difficult to grow and giving them the information to go, these are the reasons why your your business won't move forward. And Mm -hmm. it's having them hard conversations with advisors because Business owners and advisors, you know, if you look at the traditional business owner, okay, in the advisor space, okay, they have most probably been a successful advisor and suddenly they've started to grow as a business. They bring an administrator, they bring an advisor on board and suddenly they're now a business owner. Mm. They've never really been trained in management. They don't yeah. really know how to do development program and suddenly they're now a bigger business mm. and they sometimes can upset their staff and they can't, you know, look after their staff or retain their staff. And it's about us coming in from a different angle and going let me review what you're currently doing with your team let me see how we can help you grow you know because we understand the pain points and we've got the stats that show why your team or why power planners are moving on why administrators are moving on or how to attract a trainee financial advisor to your business you know what Mm -hmm. they're looking for i can give you that information about what they're looking for and we can build a model to attract that type of candidate you know be an employer of choice how can you be an employer of choice you know and it's starting to map out them questions um and i've got so many different case studies i can i can share with you to kind of give Mm -hmm. you i i just feel quite passionate about it because we're people we are people people you know Mm-hmm. advisors deal with people every day and yeah. we're just dealing from we're dealing with people from a different angle now you know to kind of help them through their careers you know yeah that makes sense i guess my next question to you um is like it works in two parts in terms of what is the process like when you're working with an ifa and they're like yeah. we need new power planners we need new yeah. um administrators we need a great financial advisors and financial planners you know and then from the other side when you're bringing people into that into the business what you know that's kind of the twofold so yeah. it's take that on as you want to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Happy to give you an overview. So yeah. if we look at it from a candidate perspective, okay. Mm-hmm. So from a candidate perspective, we're trying to, and we've kind of built building that business where we don't want people to come to us because they're looking for a job. Okay. We want people to come to us and just engage with us if they want to actively grow their grow their careers because mm-hmm. we do regular webinars regular blogs webinar things with money marketing at different mm-hmm. events that we participate in and mm-hmm. we get specialists in that maybe be you know how to ask for a pay rise from your from your from your staff or it may be you know af7 exam support or something like that so we're looking at it from two perspectives that we want to be able we want people to come to us because they want to grow in their careers on the, on, on the candidate side Mm -hmm. They want some advice, want some tips, you know, on interview preparation if they're going for an interview. So that's one element. And then naturally, we can naturally support them in getting a role. So, you know, with us, we do every candidate has a kind of bespoke, you know, um, resource, if you like. We'll sit down with them, speak to them about what they want from their job, what sort of advice firm they want to look for. Do they want to be do they want to get into the industry? As as of the trainee side, I think we're going to speak on about a little bit later. And we start to map out local firms, the types of clients 
that they want to deal with and we start to piece together them sorts of firms so if, I, if a power planner came to me for example that you know wants to work with directly authorized firms with an independent background or she's got an ambition to become chartered maybe mm-hmm. we look at chartered businesses you know with the data that we have we work very closely with the fca um, register which is obviously an open register and we can segment that data and bring up a short list of of firms that you know we could basically engage for that applicant or they can do it themselves you know um, and tell them how to present themselves at interview how to how to best represent themselves in front of them clients so mm-hmm. that's one element that we do um, and we also with every single one of our candidates we do video interviewing as well because some people can't write cvs i kind of put it out there you know and we physically do not have the time and resources to write everyone's cvs again okay right. that is a full-time job maybe in the future yeah. we might have someone full-time for that but you know and we want to be able to give people the platform to mm-hmm. get in front of their employer of choice. And mm-hmm. sometimes the best way to do that is through video. So what we do with a lot of our lot of our candidates is we present a CV, we mm-hmm. present a covering letter that we do, and we also do a 10 minute video. And that's saying, so if we take a training advisor, for example, you know, why do you want to be a training advisor? Why should this client ha- bring you on board against everybody else? You know, and we have a little bit of interview prep as well. But what mm-hmm. we're trying to do is bring that personality out. Yeah. And that we find outweighs a CV 20 to 1, you know. Yeah. And I've had, I've gave clients a CV and they've gone, I don't want to interview. I don't want yeah. to interview that person. Two weeks later, I sent them a video. This person is amazing. Like, I cannot wait to hire. Like, it is I literally believe- like, like black and white. It's insane. I- I think videos are so much better. I I feel like I'm so much better in person, personally. <laughs> like I'm great at probably talking my not talking myself up, but I'm I'm great at talking to people. So it's much easier than actually writing down all your attributes. It seems so. I I don't know. It doesn't come naturally, and I guess yeah. to most people it doesn't come naturally. So maybe yeah. that's where you know the CV writing becomes a big issue, and that's why there's people who specialize in that. But exactly, yeah, that, yeah, I like the idea of that video. I think that's probably where we're moving towards in terms of you know future job applications. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a balance as well. If I want to, because if you know, from from our client perspective, you know, if we flip to the client side, you know, clients come to us because, you know, we get access to talent that people can't find. You know, we're mm. very much bespoke on our searching. You know, we can literally be confident and say we have got access to every single advisor in the whole of the UK. As long mm. as they're registered on the FCA, we've got access to them. We're very right. proud of that. You know, we mm-hmm. only recruit admin power partners, training advisors and advisors. You know, that's all mm-hmm. we do. So we mm-hmm. need to know that inside and out. So from a, a client perspective, if they just receive a random video from anyone, they'll probably be less inclined to take the time to watch a 15 minute video, for example. Mm-hmm. But where it works with us, because they've, you know, we, we're on our subscription, for example, they're like, no, I know Lewis and his team have done through the vetting process and mm-hmm. now done a video interview and he believes or Lewis and his team believe that I should you know take the time to look at this 10 minute video I'm going to do that sort of thing yeah. you know so it's a really good way of getting them people through that door you know it, it really is yeah you know, which, which is good no I, I think I like that process and I think it'll make it feel more bespoke for the client as well they feel like oh these people are tailored to me that you know exactly what suits me um Absolutely. But, <clears throat> Earlier, we were talking about how you're kind of establishing a way that um, trainee advisors, if there's certain um, qualifications that they still need to achieve, that you might be able to uh, assist the with them getting those without yeah. the cost. Yeah. So, what is that? What is that that you've been working yeah. on? Absolutely, absolutely. So. This really started, if we go back, I remember recruiting for trainee advisors, okay, Mm. trainee financial advisors in some cities and towns up and and down the UK. This is probably going back probably when we first started, 2016, 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. And on the job spec, it was always saying, you know, for a trainee advisor, two years experience, and you also need to have the diploma, okay? So it's kind of like, well, we get people contacting, well, 
I don't have the experience and you know they're really expensive you know for the, in some cases depending on the body that you go to you know what option what how else do I get into financial services there was no other in you know apart from a few very large academies there wasn't very many options in Mm-hmm. And then I started to speak to clients. Um, you know, majority of clients out there, okay, if we look at financial planning firms as a whole, a lot of them are smaller, medium-sized businesses. You know, yeah. natu- yes, there are some very big beasts out there, absolutely. But majority of them are in the smaller, a lot of them are under 10, 10 pay per person businesses. Mm-hmm. And for that sort of business, that's what we'd be classed in. And if we had somebody that we was hiring ourselves mm-hmm. that we wasn't necessarily going to get the value out of, or know that that's the career path that they want to go down that's a risk to our business so we're speaking to business owners and they're going well how do i know that they want to be an advisor or want a career in financial planning you know how do we know that and and that's always a a difficult question to ask when you bring youngsters through and they don't know necessarily their career path so we wanted to come up with a solution so what we've basically been doing is putting together, you know, and engaging with local um, um, industry bodies so the industry qualifications for the diploma and looking at reduced costs and reduced rates on that. We've mm-hmm. also partnered up with other um, training providers out there as well that actually provides the training for the diplomas as well to help them get through and also setting up um, relationships with some of the biggest academies out there. That means that we can actually get people through the diploma Mm -hmm. at no cost to them, Mm -hmm. which enables them to have a career in financial planning and a job at the end of it as well. So it's little things like that, that we obviously need to obviously target and find them candidates that do want a career in financial planning. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's our job to then screen them, put them forward to them them, them clients out there. Mm -hmm. But we're giving them that platform and clients are coming to us and going, right, if you can find them, we will hire them, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just raises that profile of, it raises the profile of the exams we can get them paid for certain firms will pay for every single one you, you know we need to present you in the best way and mm-hmm. it is up a video you know it is because they want to see you on two folds if you're going to be sitting in front of a client okay they want to see how you articulate yourself a lot of the meetings these days are done by teams done yeah by teams. If yeah you need to you need to show that you want to be an advisor is how you do it so we do all the prep for that. We do all the CV prepping for that. We do everything to give you the best chance of securing that, securing that placement. So, yeah, we, we're super proud because we feel like, you know, I don't want them. I don't want to. I want to have a business in 15, 20, 30 years. You know, I want to be able to help the young people get into the industry, train them up and be the future of the industry that we're in. You know, yeah. and that's what we're incredibly proud of at the moment that we we believe by one recruit at a time, we can do that. You know, and we're only. We're only a small firm, but we've got big ambitions, you know, and like like every firm, you've got to start with one. And I'm very, a, a lot of people, a lot of clients and candidates and a lot of your colleagues, you know, you are what you see with me. I'm, I'm very raw. I'm mm-hmm. very, um, I'm very normal. And I'll tell you how <laughs> it is. If I feel like I need to improve your CV or yeah. you need to come across differently, because I want to give you, I want you to be the best person of you can. You know, I have a little mm-hmm. mantra and it says, I have it on my desk. I have it on my phone. It's kind of, I intend to make a positive contribution to every single person that I meet, you know, a little bit of an uplift spirit, you know, yeah. so it's little things about that, that we hope to do and the bigger picture of the business we want to do that from the value and webinar support you know from helping clients retain their staff better you know we Mm. want to slowly do little things to help the industry that that we love you know and in a way it doesn't make much money at the early days but we know in the future it will do sort of thing yeah it's, it's a lot of value add to get to where we need to be I mean, it makes sense. And also in terms of um, your plans, I think in the long run, in those all these conversations about, you know, more diversity and inclusion within the industry, I think setting up things like that, uh, where people don't have to worry about costs and stuff like that, or worry about how they might appear because you're giving that guidance, they will feel more comfortable there's certain people that might be like oh no I can't do this because you know I have kids to worry about or you know I I don't have the background I don't have the money that will allow me to do this course and take the time out to study um so this will definitely help with that and I think absolutely that's strong. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like with one of our relationships that we, that we've got, um, we, we're ironing out some fire deeds. So I can't actively show who it is right, right this second on the video. But, mm-hmm. you know, we've got a program with them, which 
gives us access to every single um, candidate that they get on their scholarship program, which right. means they get the diploma fully paid for. We mm -hmm. can obviously give them um, and uh, give candidates an into this program as well, which means that they come from either black ethnic background or mm -hmm. from a, a different background that's not normally white and British, because if you be honest, it's 90% of the industry. We need to change that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm seeing that from all of our clients that we work with, you know, we want to have, we want our board to be different you know mm. our board isn't different um so we, we're hearing that and we need to understand well how do we attract them sorts of candidates so one of their models is people that are coming from that sort of background that are mainly first to university so mm. they are the first person in their family to go to university they mm. don't have a job at the moment so i.e., they don't have a a prospect or an entry into the industry mm -hmm. they will basically get 100 percent of the diploma fully funded through a scholarship we will then get hold of that candidate we will find out exactly what they want and we market them out free of charge totally for free so it doesn't cost any client whatsoever a single penny at all all we want to do is raise that platform of, of that candidate get them into it into a job the benefit for a client they've got a candidate that wants to be an advisor or a power planner and they've got mm -hmm. the diploma 100 paid for you know mm -hmm. so we're hoping that it covers off twofold the candidate's going to get the opportunity in at no cost and they're going to get an, an opportunity and a job that's what we're helping them do from the client perspective they, they're going to have their worry de-risked. So mm -hmm. how do I know they want to be an advisor or a power plant? How do I know they want to be in the industry? Right, well, we've partnered up with somebody. They've got the diploma. They've got the first stage done. You know, that's a, a good tick done. And it's not going to cost you anything. And it's going to cost you no recruitment fee as well. You know, yeah. so it, we're, tr we're trying to do our little bit. And like anything, it's it's one person at a time sort of thing yeah. on that journey. I know? mean, you have to start somewhere. But I still think that it's a really great idea. And at least you're doing something you know oh, instead no. of just talking about it and being like well this might be a good idea then just not doing anything with it I like that it's actually actively being put into place um but in terms of uh the the clients that you yes. have um yeah. what worries do they have when they're kind of approaching and trying to find and what are the risks for them and what what do they what are their concerns you know when they're looking for new admin power planners yeah financial absolutely. advisors so client sort of the clients that we kind of deal with do range we'd range from the some of the biggest clients you know in in the uk and in our presence mm -hmm. and also a lot of boutique smaller business as well and everything in between i so our sweet spot is most probably 50 employees and less most likely is a bit of a sweet spot for us mm -hmm. um, because we kind of add a lot more other than recruitment so you know a lot of our clients say to us that we're kind of like an in-house recruitment feel but mm -hmm. we're specialist in just admin parapets and advisors you know we take that concern away mm -hmm. from you know, from that client, we can go, right, Lewis and his team are going to go and find us a candidate perfectly. You know, we, we can trust them. They'll do the interview process, the video interviewing. We've even got a fantastic new culture product that we've just released to mm -hmm. help um, employers retain their staff better, looking at metrics and help them grow, look at their performance, how to increase their performance. We do that free of charge for all of our clients. And that's, that's a product great. worth tens of thousands in its own right. Yeah. Um, so what we're, what we're trying to do when they're coming to us about what their concerns are, a lot of them, particularly we're looking on the trainee side, okay, mm -hmm. looking on the, the trainee side, they're looking for somebody that's got an ambition, you know, mm -hmm. ambition to, to help somebody. You know, the industry has changed. It's not a sales industry anymore. You know, if you come to an interview saying you're going to do £200,000 a year, you know, I'm going to be calling everyone, you know, you're not allowed to do that anymore. You, no. You've got to come away from that. So a lot of it is about client first, you know, mm -hmm. how you can do that. Why do you want to come into this industry? Why, why was it? And when you start asking them questions, I don't, we don't, the clients don't want to hear the fluffy answers, you know, yeah. they want to hear the real reasons. When we ask them questions, the sorts of replies we get from candidates are kind of like, well, well, my my granddad was lost all of his money from um, from an advisor years ago. You know, really bad experience. I don't want that to happen. You know, I'm cons you know one. I don't want that to happen. You know, one um, one candidate was basically saying, um, my 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 grandpa, my 
my father and mum have got no savings whatsoever. I want to give mm-hmm. them that financial education. I want the time to send they need to save now so they can retire at the age they want to, you know. Yeah. Really honest questions. And suddenly you start to understand where that person's coming from. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like, I get that. I understand that. And from a client, if they can understand that, there's a real honesty that sits behind them words, not I want a salary, how much you're offering me, you know. <laughs> yeah. I want to be in this industry because I want to learn, I don't want this to happen to my my future generation's children, yeah. you know. So I suppose, you know, from a client, it's a risk, of course. You know, mm-hmm. they need to ensure that they have they are making money out of that person. I know you've got to sell it, but it's a business. If the business will make money, then mm-hmm. there's no jobs anyway. So yeah. they're going to have to start off with doing admin, you know, start to unfortunately sit on with providers, find them providers, and they are not fun. Uh, they are not <laughs> fun to phone. Um, please, providers, get in the 21st century. You know, that would be great. Um, I'm going to start talking to some of them, so maybe I'll bring that up. <laughs> please do. Please. I mean, I, I saw a little post on LinkedIn from, from a power panel, um, or it was, I can't remember which, who, who it was, off memory. And I think she said in five days, I think she spent nine hours, nine hours on the phone to providers on hold. Nine Jesus. hours. I mean, I'd be hitting myself against a brick wall. I mean, I I have been doing uh, obviously with like all the energy bill stuff. So I've been speaking yeah. to my energy provider more than ever. And <laughs> I've hated the like 45 minute to an hour long wait that I've had to have each time when I try and get through. And I can't imagine doing that as a job on someone else's behalf as well it's not for me personally i think i'd be like oh my god just listening to that music i know drive me crazy we need i need to update the music you know we gotta get we need some we need some we need to get some trends or yeah exactly (laughs) you know um but you know that that's another conversation i suppose for for Mm -hmm. another day but it's each each of them conversations that they have with providers, they're on there because they need to get the value out of that to help their client, you know. So sometimes you've got to go through the pain to get the results to help their client at the end of it, you know. So yeah, it's 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 a good journey. It's a very good journey. And a lot of people have a lot of conversations about how do I get in the industry or I'm a power panel, I feel stagnated about where I want to go to, you know. Um some parents that we speak to feel they've got no more routes they might be chartered what does my next route look like you know Mm. there are a lot more options out there than you probably believe you know Mm. um the industry is changing a lot people's businesses are changing a lot um and there is different avenues that you can go down you know from specialists from client facing from being authorized to give advice but not actually an advisor that's a new Mm. thing we're seeing at the moment you know there's a lot of different avenues that we're seeing because a concern for a lot of people is what if I, how do I know if I want to be an advisor? That's another thing, you know? So you may think you want to be an advisor and you might get to that point and think, oh God, what a wasted journey. I've done all this exam support. I'm just not comfortable in front of clients. Well, mm-hmm. there are other routes that you can do behind the scenes to add value to clients, or you might not like the business development at, at area of that, of provide, finding professional introducers and engaging clients in accountants to get their clients, mm-hmm. you know? There are other avenues you can look at. There are servicing type roles. There are so many different avenues. Sometimes it's having a conversation, pick up the phone and going, Lewis, I heard you waffle along, you know, on your podcast, <laughs> but I've got some questions, you know, me and the team are happy to support, you know, no question is a silly question. You know, we've heard it all before, you know, we, yeah. we want to help. We want to help. I always take that pers- uh, that phrase very personally because, um, I always ask this, what I think are silly questions, but it's just the easiest way for me to find the most information because I feel like um, it just makes you feel, it, it just makes you appear like someone who's willing to learn regardless of what it might make you look like. Yeah. Um, which I think that humility is probably very important when you're an advisor. Um, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And it helps with clients as well because, yeah. you know, a lot of clients out there, okay, and not sitting on multi millions of pounds, and you know they want all the most high risk investments. They know everything about the market. You know they don't. A lot yeah, of them yeah. are reaching fifty five at retirement, thinking, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on with my pension. You know mm-hmm. they don't take my mum for example. She's fifty two. She doesn't know what's going on with her pension at the moment. You know she needs to go sit down with her advisor, give an update of exactly what what's going on, mm-hmm. and. 
mum will be asking them very silly questions. So the advisor's just got to ask the silly questions back and go, you're not being silly at all because, you know, even though I know the information, there's no point me going on and talking to you in all this financial jargon. I've got to numb it down to the basics so everybody understands, you know. There, there was something that I read was something about, you know, right words and right do documents and letters is it for like a five or six year old or something or it was yeah. write them at a real way so people just understand what you're talking about you know yeah. you know and a lot of power planners now um are starting to do that with obviously i know the suitability report is obviously you've got to put all the regulation in there as well but mm -hmm. a lot of them are doing small mini reports or a little cheeky little financial plan at the start to go actually this is what we're trying to do. This mm -hmm. is a reality. This is what we need to do to get you there. You know, one sheet, there it is for you, you know, yeah. and it's for people to understand because we're not all investment whizzes. We don't know the answers all the time. Yeah. So sometimes we just need it really easy. We need it as a child. Talk to yeah. your child. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a reason why those like four dummies books, you know, like yeah. coding for dummies. There's a reason why those are always bestsellers and they'll continue to do so because you want the most simplified version. And then once you've picked up the jargon, which I think financial services as an industry is quite steeped with a lot of jargon that can trip people up and turn people away or turn people off it. Um, but being able to do that simplification or being able to present it in a way that's a bit fun, I think also is helpful. Um, so that's probably why you need more creative people to come in yeah, as well, to come in absolutely. and be able to do that. Um, okay. So finally, Lewis, um, I just want to ask you, what is your advice for someone who is looking into in entering the industry? What, you know, obviously you see a lot of these people coming to you. What would you say they should do to follow down that path? Absolutely. So, really depending on the age of that that candidate okay so and mm -hmm. what part of the journey they're on if we're talking young person straight out of university okay mm -hmm. sadly our our system doesn't actively support at the moment um people to go straight into financial planning or anything like that you know mm -hmm. there's not many you can do an accountancy degree and all these others but financial planning is not on the curriculum so yeah do something business finance related just to if you if you know that that's what you want to do early on and you're at university that's what you want to do mm -hmm. then and you want to go down the uni option absolutely fantastic route okay mm -hmm. start getting it getting a you know getting a you know, bachelor's in um you know in banking and finance something like that mm -hmm. and then start to think about what opportunities there are to get you in you may have to start off doing administration mm -hmm. you can pay for the exams yourself if you, if you could afford it and a training program um i'm happy to point anyone in the right direction so we've got a lot of discounts through different providers that we use so mm -hmm. they don't have to pay full price um so we get allocated allowance every year to help candidates like that yeah, speak to specialist recruiters okay that mm -hmm. do generally specialize okay this is the frustrating part mm -hmm. so not all recruiters are the same so please you know if you do have a bad experience we are trying to change that mindset but mm -hmm. look at a specialist that do work in administration power planners and advice as a market you know that our financial planning specialists ask them their insight they will know the route to get you in um if you're a second careerist so you know if you want to restudy if you're an accountant you want to restudy you know happy to give you a bit of an into what that looks like again a lot of the options we've got where you don't have to pay for the full diploma or give you advice and tips on how to get in um so happy to support them sort of candidates and even you know th that goes along saying if you want to just change your roles or it's sports people is another big one as well you know people that have done sport before yeah cricket players or rugby players and yeah. we've had a policeman come to us that wow. you know he got through he, he had a really bad accident and basically it was sort of, like couldn't work no longer like his mm -hmm. spine and he, he's now walking absolutely no problem but he couldn't do any like active duty or active service and he got the diploma got the advance and we just got him a job we just wanted to support him the best that we could at no cost you know we want just if we can't we can't do anything we'll be honest with you but we mm -hmm. will give you the best bit and we'll tell you how to do it you know mm -hmm. there was a, a an advisor that said, i'm trying to recruit but i don't want to pay for the fees i said fine i said look hopefully you come to a different point 
let's set up how you can find that person you know use linkedin engage do this i can help candidates do that at the same time as well you know so um yeah have a conversation i'd I'd probably say don't be afraid to pick up the phone at any different stages that you want to to think about what that journey could look like for you and how to do that effectively yeah well that's fantastic advice thank you so much for speaking with me today lewis no, absolute pleasure. And if anyone's got any questions, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, the company's Anthony George. So please don't don't hesitate. All right. Thank you so much for having me this yeah. afternoon. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to In Conversation With. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition, Money Marketing Magazine. So make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. See you next time.